On the drills and uh, it's day one, right? But uh, to have the whole group together and being able to talk to them and catch up with a lot of them on the field and, and see the work they put in, in the off season uh, as an organization, you know, the medical staff and the strength and condition coaches, uh, they, they, we feel very comfortable where they're at. And uh, now it's just a matter of uh, keep building up. Well, we got this one out of the way and uh, now we just business as usual. What did you talk about in that meeting you had? Uh, talk about life, man. Like, uh, you know, how, how much we miss them. Uh, during the off season, not being able to, to connect with them. Obviously, we know the reasons, but at the same time, one, one of the things that we want to make sure as an organization, so you got to turn the page and it's not a sprint. You know, uh, you have to slow it down. Uh, I know uh, rumors wise and transaction wise and, and you know, the, the handful amount of games, it, it looks like it's going to be a, <clears throat> a hundred meter raise, but it's not. We know it, so uh, if we are able to do that, not only players or staff down here, but from top to bottom, we're going to be in good shape. What do you mean by turn the page? Turn the page, also. Turn the page in the sense that you know everything that was talked about baseball the last three weeks, right? I mean, it seems like we were in a good place, right? And we have to turn the page on that. And and the other one too, you know, um, I learned. I learned in 18 going to 19. You know, it's not the same season, you know? So uh, it's a new season, a lot of new challenges. And uh, obviously we have to cancel the noise because it's gonna be loud. There's a lot of good teams in this division. We are one of them. But at the same time, it's kind of like last year in a sense that we have to fight for every inch. You know, uh, we gotta get better. We gotta keep, you know, improving and we'll see where it takes us. They just, they, they just said he pitched Friday. What would we say a pitch for the first time? Uh, I got to talk to Bushy, but uh, right now, schedule-wise, I think it's uh, Nate on Friday. Friday and Nick on Saturday. That's Sam. I got to talk to Bushy and see where we are. Yeah. Alex, was there anybody after the physicals who's not ready to go right away? Uh, right now, the only guy is Ronaldo, who's not here. There's a few guys that, it's not that they're limited, but we got to be careful with the ramp up. But uh, right now, you know, everything has been positive for us. Who are the guys who are limited? Uh, I'm not going to get into those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alex, you were talking to Xander and Arroyo today. They said they you know, were vaccinated since the end of the season. How encouraging is that for you, you know, just knowing that the Toronto thing and all that stuff? Well, we can't assume, right? I think that's the big thing. You know, uh, a lot of things change in the off season, and we're getting information throughout the whole process. You know, tonight we got a meeting with medical staff and the strength and conditioning coaches and, you know, see who's uh, who's a 10, who's a 5, or who's a 0, you know. There's not too many zeros here, but, uh, you know, it's one of those that uh, people, like I always said, you know, they make their choices and, you know, they make decisions and you got to respect it and, uh, you know, they went public with it, well, good, you know. So, you know, Toronto is in I don't know how many days, you know. Before Toronto, we played the Yankees. We played Detroit, we played the Twins, I think we played the Rays. Yeah. I got it right. Uh, so we'll get there when we get there, but you know, it seems like they can play in Toronto. You guys will have, there will be a deadline to do that though, right? To be eligible to, to be Honestly, I'm, I'm still gathering information, you know. I still don't know the rules for, for this thing here. I think we're playing nine and we're still debating of like, uh, re, you know, uh, re-entries and all that. So they let us know, and we go from there. Are you less concerned about this maybe than you were a couple of days ago? Vaccination? I wasn't concerned a couple, a couple of days ago. Yeah, I had a I had a pretty good idea where we were. So, you know, we keep talking to guys, and like I said, things things change. You know, so we, we should be okay. You feel good about having all of your frontline players available? I'm um, I'm good. We're gonna be okay. Yeah, um, we're gonna be okay. Alex, for uh, Thursday. Yeah, bullpen day. I don't have the the names, but uh, there's a lot of guys. Uh, there's been guys here for for a month. I, it's not only ten days. So uh, you know, we'll have nine innings if we have to play nine. Obviously, none of the starters will play on on Thursday. There's a good chance some of them will play Friday. A bigger chance they'll play Saturday, and from there we'll go. 
on, off, on, off, and then at a certain time they have to play back-to-back -back games, and we keep building up. We got games all over the place. We got bats all over the place. Uh, minor leagues, the minor leagues, I think, start, they start playing tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So at-bat-wise, at bat we should be okay sending guys back there to the, to the, to the fields and, and, and get at-bats. And uh, also, the other way around, too, like not everything is at-bats for this one. Um, some of them, they have to go there and play defense for three or four innings, so they get their legs under. So um, it's interesting, but I think we have a good plan. We were here for three weeks, so if we don't have a good plan, then we actually wasted our time. So um, we, we feel good where we're at as far as structure and all that. Alex, how good did it feel, how good did it feel today just considering the lockout, considering that sort of back out there the whole team out there? It's great. It's great. Um, you know, um, we, we learn a lot from last year. Uh, not only on the field, but as a group, we grew up as a as a group. You know, uh, it's the first season with me and Heim uh, running the show, and uh, I learned a lot from them. And um, we're in a good place. We added some guys that uh, been there, done that. You know, like I said, you know, uh, Jackie and Rich. They they know the program. They've been here longer than me, uh, and uh, it's good to have them. But the people we add, they're quality individuals too. You know, Michael, you know, um, we all remember in 13 with the Cardinals, what he did and all that. And he's not taking anything for granted. You know, he dominated those playoffs. And from there, it hasn't been what we thought as far as like him winning World Series and all that stuff. So it's a very hungry group that, uh, you know, they're just putting work. They're putting work. And, uh, you know, it was a fun day one. You know, we. We got some people out early today because of the structure of the meetings and um, you know, for, for being a day one and not knowing what the guys you know, did in the offseason because you got, you got to see it. You know, they can tell you all this stuff and you can measure everything, but you got to see them taking ground balls, running the 300s, all that. It's been very positive, so we're, we, we feel good where we are today. No, not playoff beer. This is house beer. You know, I, I said it before. You know, this is not about the Red Sox or other stuff. It's about Angelica. You know, she hates me right now because I keep saying this, but yeah, you got to give her credit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so she's happy that I'm keeping it. Tomorrow's photo day. I'll keep it tomorrow. I did a few things already for the scoreboard. So even if I shave, the beer will be there. All depends how you measure it, right? Uh, you know, like I said before, I said again, you know, he was my shortstop in the World Series. He was my shortstop in the Wild Card game. You know, I bet there's a lot of managers out there. If you tell them who you want in a big game playing shortstop, they'll say Xander, and I feel the same way. What do you guys like about Um, I mean, good stuff. Obviously, not healthy. The last few years, but uh, stuff-wise, he's one of the best lefties we recognize out there. Um, you know, cutter, good against lefties, good against righties. It's more about getting, you know, lefties and righties out. We know the rules, and uh, we felt like last year we were a little bit short in a sense of our lefties getting righties out. And uh, with him in the in the mix, you know, he's one of those, and uh, he can give you multiple innings. Obviously, he, he was a starter at one point in his career, but we, we don't see him as a starter. We see him as somebody that can pitch leverage innings uh, during the season, and he's going to help us. It feels like you guys are pretty heavy lefties, you know, and probably will be more in the next couple of days. Um, how's that going to be managed with all those guys? I mean, um, it's something we recognized last year, and uh, we were short at one point during the season, and. You know, I'll say it, I think even in the playoffs uh, and, you know, something we recognize in the offseason that we wanted to get better and we got better, you know, adding Matt. Xander said that you guys were working on some new drills with him defensively. Like, is there anything that you want to see from him that's different than <coughs> improvements on defense that you want to see? Um, I think the drills are more actually to for them to get their feet under. Uh, we're going to transition for, like, the workload now on the field is less. It's going to be more drills, and then they go and take the grounders. But, you know, with him, actually, it's the first step, you know. Uh, but, like I always said, and you saw him, you know, he looks bigger than last year. You know, it's amazing. I don't know how he does it, but, you know, he looks stronger. 
and more agile and more explosive. And it's a testament to who he is. But there were a few things that we, we talk about in November in our exit meetings that he needed to do, and it seems like he did, and it just got to keep building up. One thing for sure, whatever he touches, he turns into outs. You know, he doesn't make too many errors. It's just a matter of a few adjustments here and there, and we can help him with positioning, and we'll see what the final product is going to be. But I, like I said before, you know, like in a big game, there's a lot of managers out there who will say, give me that guy, and we'll see what happens. He's a homer in the first inning, it's 3 nothing, and then he makes all the plays at shortstop, and you advance. I just feel like people people probably think that he doesn't care defensively, and he's the other way around. And uh, you know, his goal is to win a Gold Glove. You know, like he has a lot of silver. You know, he he would love to have that. And all these offensive short, uh, shortstops, they would love to win a Gold Glove. All of them. You know, like like Carlos was that way. You know, like oh, he's an offensive. Guy. He, I mean, he wanted to win that Gold Glove, and he did last year. You know, and uh, you talk to any of those, and good for them. I was the other way around. Let me freaking rake, rake like you guys, you know. But uh, they, they do care. They want to be the best of the best, you know. And he sees, you know, all these guys, what they've done defensively. But if you talk to those guys, they would love to be like him offensively. So we'll see what happens, you know. But uh, we had conversations, and he, he knows how I feel about it. So, you know, um, I always said just cancel the noise, do your thing, and we'll be happy with it. Buen pitch, el buen cambio, buen cambio. Uno de esos muchachos que, que añadimos a lo último, que reconocemos que su cambio es, es un muy buen picheo. Y veremos a ver a dónde nos lleva. Siempre estamos buscando por profundidad. Y, y poder reconocerlo y poder filmarlo fue bien importante para nosotros. Um, I think the, the, the clock is, is something important, right? Just, uh, I've been watching a lot of college games the last two, two weeks, and the pace of the game is different. It is. Uh, I know a lot of people got on, you know, Corbin and Vanderbilt with the, with the watches, but wow, the pace is different. It's 14, 14 seconds. I, I was watching the other day, 14 seconds with nobody on, 17 seconds with me on. It's like in and out, in and out. Get the sign, go, get the sign up. It's different. You know, it's different, but it seems like it's working. Um, I'm all for changes in the game. I, I, I still, I, I saw the report yesterday. I was like, hey, you know, that's pretty cool. Give me the 10 and rule back. But, uh, I mean, the shift, we'll see how it goes. I, I have no idea what the adjustments will be. I know in the minor leagues they're going to try it right from double A down, if I'm not mistaken. Um, do I agree with it? Not 100%, but I think it's not just make the adjustment or we're going to do this just, just to do it. I bet there's a lot of people that are going to sit down and go over it and see where it takes us. Oh, would you be in favor of a watch like that where you call the pitch directly? To the Duke, player? man, it, I mean, technology-wise, you're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, I mean, football, you would know, they call the play. Yeah, yeah, and the, all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, see, I see the SEC, I think they have the, the – the one thing I don't I don't understand about the Vandy situation is, you know, it's different in college because yeah. they don't what they tell you you throw, but you know here, yeah. you know like when you shake up what what you're gonna do and here the pitcher kind of like calls his own game so at one point something is gonna come up, let's put it that way, right. and you know hopefully it's in 15 years and that time. I'm watching the kids playing with that, and I'm not mad at him. We're good? Thank you.